Oké. Okay. God, we should have glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit, and Jesus, Almighty name. You have rough of all, the Son, and Spirit, and Jesus, Almighty name. Okay, let's see. Alrighty then. What's up? Another one, huh? It's like there's no ending. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit, and Jesus, Almighty name. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit, and Jesus, Almighty name. You have rough, you have rough, you have Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Yeah, I know. one second. Glory to Father, Son, and Spirit. Okay, let's do this. All right. <clears throat> name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but let us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. And the power and the glory will down forever unto ages of ages. In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, grant me perfect strict discipline spiritually and physically. The vigor, the health, the holiness to the light Jesus Christ. Strengthen my throat, <clears throat> my heart, my arteries, my lungs, my chest. With the health I need to serve your church, to help these people. Use my mouth as your mouthpiece. to Recall every jot to the poor scripture perfectly, accurately. Destroy all error and sin in me. And give us the power to be doers of your word and love the Lord Jesus Christ by your power. Take over this ministry. Close the door of censorship. Destroy distractions. Illuminate this couple. Bring them to the fullness of truth that the Lord Jesus Christ is God Almighty in the flesh. And rebuke Satan and wash us in the blood of Jesus, our loved ones, my daughters. We need you, Holy Spirit. Never let us go. We thank you. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Glory to the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Yavrafa, Yavrafa. All right, buddy, you're on stage. What's going on? All right, yeah. So we're just, I guess, calling just to have a discussion. Like I said, we were in this cult. My wife's been in since she was, you know, a child. Um, yes, before you go on. We've, uh, uh, Alex, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Explain when you say cult, tell them the cult. What is it? So, so they don't, a lot, too many yeah. cults for oh. Yeah. So it's, it's the, the group is called the Way International. And the whole basis is they deny that Jesus Christ is God. They yep. say he's the son of God and that he was only a man. He was created. Um, and there's, you know, books that we have to read that say, you know, by, you know, Victor Paul Werewolf, that Jesus is not God. And, you know, per other videos I've watched, you know, they pick and ping pong, you know, between different verses that say son of God. And they're fixated on the word son, that he can't be God because he says he's the son of God. Yeah. So you left the cult? Yes, sir. It, okay. uh, began with my wife. Um, she was, you know, in prayer a lot and, you know, saying, hey, God, you know, if, if I'm, I'm not afraid to be wrong, you know, if, if, if what I've been taught is wrong, just show me the way. Um, started, you know, listening and seeing different uh, testimonies and, you know, even like, you know, Muslims that will convert to Christianity, like, you know, they believe that Jesus Christ is God. Um, and you know, they're willing to lose and risk their lives, you know, to, to, to convert to Christianity. So, uh, that was one thing. And then seeing that there's no fruit from this cult, um, you know, they don't go out and pray. You know, there's no, you have to pay, uh, a pay like a fee to go to a certain class to get, I guess, more revelation. Yeah. More relation, you know, they're going to get closer to God. You have to pay for these classes. And I didn't, I didn't feel like that was, that was right either. The way international. Okay, now there's some people in the background I hear. So it's besides your wife who's there. Uh, I have a, a three-year-old daughter and then a right. two-year-old son. But you guys can focus, right? So yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're we're here. You call me sir, man. How old are you, dude? Uh, I'm 30. Okay, I'm old enough to be your father. Yeah, I'm sad. <laughs> okay, so you were okay with? She was okay with being wrong and seeing what the truth is. So. If, you, if they're going to talk, maybe you're going to mute yourself and unmute one. Yeah, that'll be easier. So you, she was okay with being wrong if God showed her. So I still don't know. Did she leave or you left or you both left or you didn't leave? We, we both left. We I both. see. She, she left first this. and then I saw, you know, how she changed, um, you know, and it just it's led us to, you know, diving in and reading it for ourselves. and. Seeing that, hey, you know, the Bible can't itself when it says, you know, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. How can that be if Jesus Christ is not God? 
So then you already, that's where I, I thought when you reached out to me, you had questions about the Trinity, but what's the problem then? So I guess the, we still, I mean, it, it, we have family that are in it and we just have a hard time explaining how it is because like I said, they're fixated on, we're neither concept on the Trinity, but they're, they're fixated on the word son. So okay. when we say, yes, he is the son of God, but he is God. They said, well, how can that be? You know, he says he's the son of God, not God. And we don't know how to. Yeah, that's easy that. to respond to. But uh, do you have their objections ready? All their objections we can address or do you have them? Yeah, I have one of them. I mean, so one that they, I don't know. And this is still, I guess, new, newer to us. But they say water baptism is what? How would this say? Is adding to is adding Jesus Christ to Jesus for us yeah, that. They, can, so they, can they, say, they what so they they tell you not to get water baptized okay well i mean they're a cult they're they're out there so if they don't get water baptized and yet it's in the book of acts acts 10 if you read 46 to 48 they got baptized in water or in acts 8 if you read from 36 to 39 people were getting baptized in water so i don't know why they say don't get water baptized i don't i thought they follow the bible right <laughs> Yes, correct. Yeah, they they actually use the line rightly dividing the word of truth, and they don't do that. No. They yeah, even so say the crosses. There's not there wasn't a cross on either side of Jesus. There was two crosses on either side because they're combining two of the books of the Bible. And I didn't find that out until later. What did they say about Jesus again? I didn't get it. They say that um, there's two crosses on either side of Jesus instead of saying that there's one cross on either side because they combine the books of the gospels to make it sound like there's two people on either mm -hmm. side when it's only speaking about it in two different from do, two different perspectives yeah yeah so i mean that's that's nonsense but the water baptism is even more nonsensical because it's in the scripture yeah. so i don't know so i don't know how to how do you want me to address it when it's in scripture so do you have their objections against the deity of christ ready i mean so we can go through yeah. them yeah all they, of them they, ready right yeah they say right. that um there's a couple of that, that we have but um one of them is that they they don't understand how God can, or how Jesus can be God, but also have a God. And I don't know how to refute oh, that. That's too easy. Now, because you brought up two objections. You first brought up that, how can he be God if he's a son of God? Now you brought up, how can he be God if he has a God? So those yeah. are two objections? Yes. So you guys are focused because this is being recorded so you can come back and watch. Yes. No, so, yes, we're, we're focused. Yeah. May the Holy Spirit help us and give us grace and rebuke all distractions and the blood of Jesus Christ purify us and shield us because we need the spirit because we're going to get distracted. Satan's angry. Well, which one of the two you want me to address first? Whichever one you feel led to. I'm, I'm here to serve you guys as the spirit leads me to serve you. So which one you want me to address you to? You decide. Uh, we, we can go with Jesus Christ being God. Yeah. Okay. Jesus Christ being what? God. That wasn't your objection. Alex, you're going to make me... Jesus Christ being uh, God and also oh, having Allah, Alex, Ozebillah, Alex, Ozebillah. Alex, I'm not a patient man. I'm not a doctor. You <laughs> gave me an objection. How can he be God if he's a son of God? And then yes. she told me, how can he be God? Have another guy. Now you want to talk about Jesus God. Now these are three <laughs> points. <laughs> how can he be God if he's a son of God? Okay, so which one do you want me to address? How, how can he be God if he's a son of God? Yeah. Oh, that's very easy. How can he be man if he's a son of man? See, I don't fully understand that either. Yeah. Come on, man. You're killing me. Alex. <laughs> you won't feel Alex. Hey, Alex. Brother, Jesus yes. called himself the Son of Man, right? The Son of Man. This is Mark 14, 62, right? Yes. Jesus yes. called himself the Son of Man, right? Yes. So, but he doesn't have a male father. Did they deny the virgin birth? Um, no, they don't. They no. just say that it was, uh, that's where he began. His origin that's okay. was. I just want to know they from the virgin. So he didn't have a human father, right? Correct. No. So really, he's not a son of a man? No man fathered him? Mm. That, that they believe, no. Yeah, but you got to believe that. It's in the Bible. So no man fathered him? No. Then how can he be a no. son of man? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> no, that's right. That's right. I ask questions because when I ask you questions and drill you and make you uncomfortable, you're not going to forget. That's why people don't know why I ask questions. Because when you ask someone questions and drill it, make them comfortable, they're going to be forced to think and it's going to be second nature. As opposed to if I spoon feed you, you're going to forget, right? Gotcha. Yeah. 
This is why a lot of people don't understand why I do that. That's exactly why I do that. Because oftentimes if I just give you the answer, yeah, that will help. But it's more effective when I ask you, make you uncomfortable because you're going to really focus hard. Okay, now you think about it. He doesn't have a male father, but he's the son of man. Because if you're the son of something, for example, you have two children, right? Boy and a girl or two boys, two girls? Two boys, uh, one girl. Okay, God bless them. The oldest is boy or girl? Uh, boy. Okay, so if you say he's my son, like begets like. Kind begets kind. If a dog has offspring, what will that offspring be? A dog. Cat. Okay. So, <laughs> don't do that. I'm sorry. What happened? No, I, I made a joke. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm uncomfortable. You took it's a my shot at your husband? You took a <laughs> shot at your husband, huh? Alex, I see you got it rough all from every angle, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> wow. She took a shot at you, brother. And it's recorded, too. My goodness. <laughs> No, no. Alex, I feel you now. Now I really, my heart goes out to you, brother. But anyway, <laughs> okay. Now, if a dog begets offspring, what will be the nature of that offspring? It'll be a dog. You beget children. What are the nature of your children? Human. Human. Yeah. Or man. man. They'll be what? Man. Man. No. Or human. Your not a man. I'm sorry. Your daughter's not a man. Well, human or human. Yes. So who told you that if I'm the son of someone, I can't have the same nature of that someone that fathered me. If I'm a son of a man, I'm a man. Yes. If my daughter, my daughter is a daughter of a human, she's human. So to say that Jesus can't be God if the son of God, that's actually the opposite point. It's because he's a son of God. He has the nature of his father. Mm -hmm. uh. Right? Because yeah. God can only beget God. Is that what you're trying to say? So that's the point. If Jesus is God's son in a unique sense, unlike anyone else, which is what the Bible teaches, that means he has the nature of his father. Yes. You, just common sense. So when they say, how can he be God and the son of God? Well, how could he not be God if he's the son of God? Because you will bear the nature of your begetter or father. Okay. So that's the one. Number two, son of man, you should now understand what it means, son of man. If no human male fathered him, then why is he called son of man? Because to be a son of man means you're human. Uh, yeah. Okay. You see how it works? Because I, I don't know that you get it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes, so sir. I'm not going to move on until you guys get the point, right? So do you get the point? No, I get it. I get yes, it. I get it. So son of man means human because to be a son of man means you have the nature of man. That's all it means. In Aramaic, Barnasha, which we use to this day, that's my mother tongue, or in Hebrew, Ben Adam means one who has the nature of Adam, one who has the nature of man. So Jesus is saying, I'm the son of man, I have the nature of man because I'm human. But he didn't have a male father. So son of God means that God is his father, but he has the nature of his father because that's why we believe the Bible teaches the Trinity. Meaning it's not one person who's God, but this God who's uncreated eternally exists as the Father and His Son and His eternal Spirit. That's what the Bible teaches. It's clearly taught in Scripture. So to say, well, how can He be God, Son of God? It's like saying, how can your Son be human when He's the Son of a human? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've already told you that. You think I'm a special kind of stupid, right? Yeah. <laughs> if I were to say, hey, uh, how can your son be human? He's the son of a human, so he can't be human. You'll say, hold on, what's the color of the sky in, in your world? <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah, that makes perfect sense. But where they're getting confused, I'm going to tell you where they're getting confused. They're assuming the word God is a name of a specific person. That God means the father. So if I say Jesus God, I'm saying he's the father. Well, how can he be the father if he's the father's son? They haven't thought about how the term God is used. For example, your name is Alex. So what's your son's name? Hezekiah. Hezekiah, beautiful name. So if I say Hezekiah is Alex, you'd say, no, he's not. He's a son of Alex. See, that's how they're thinking. That when you say God, God is the name of this individual. So Jesus is not that individual. He's that individual son. Yeah. Yeah. That's that where they're sense. wrong. Yeah. That makes really good sense. That's where they're wrong. 
they don't understand the term God is not a name of just one specific individual. The term God is used for Father, Son, and Spirit to show that they possess the same nature. And I'm going to give you an example from Scripture. If I were to tell you Adam, the name of Adam, that Adam is the name of who? A man. A man. Yeah, the first first man. No, it's the name of the male and female. They were both called that. Oh, yeah, that's, that's right. I saw your video on that. That's <laughs> My bad. No, but that's okay. Uh, it's there, Both the male and female are called Adam. So that's if I cool. were to apply their logic, Eve was Adam, and yet she's married to Adam, and she gave birth to Adam. That makes no sense. Well, no, that's what the Bible says. Eve was Adam, her husband is Adam, and they gave birth to an Adam. Because Adam is a word that can refer to the nature possessed in common by every individual that possesses that nature. So why is Eve called Adam? Because she came out of Adam. She's flesh of his flesh, bone of his bones. So they're the same nature. So they're both Adam. Right? Yes. And I'm going to show it to you from because now in the English translations, they, they tell you what the word means. Like here it says, this is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day when God created man, he made him in the likeness of God. He created a male and female and he blessed them and named them man. Well, here you're going to get confused. Why is the female called man? Because in Hebrew, it's Adam. And the word Adam, Adam, can mean man, humanity, humankind, mankind. Depends how you use it in the context. So I'm going to show it to you. King James. Right here. Genesis 5, verses 1 and 2. This is the book of the generations of Adam. And the day that God created man, in the likeness of God, made he him. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam. In the day when they were created. So Eve was Adam. Her husband is Adam. They're both Adam because Adam refers to the nature they both possess. So if I'm human, I'm Adam. If you're human, you're Adam. Your wife's human, she's Adam. So I can be Adam. You can be Adam. She can be Adam because there's not only one person who's Adam. We have over 7 billion individuals who are Adam. Yeah. Same thing with the term God. The Father is God. The Son is God. The Holy Spirit is God. They're not the same person. But because they have the same nature, all of them can be called God equally. Yeah, that makes a lot. Of sense. Yeah. Well, that, that makes sense to us, and, and that's cool. what you got to show them. You yeah. got to show them that. So, well, no. who told yeah. you the word God is limited to one person? Brother, I'll show them for you. Right? Yeah, yeah. Now the other objection was, if Jesus is God, how can He be ha have a God? Well, that's that's yeah. too easy an answer, uh, because if we follow Scripture, let Scripture explain itself. Okay. First of all, it says Jesus became flesh. Watch here, John one fourteen. So we're going to follow the train of thinking, okay? But let me get the verses lined up for you. And I've done millions of sessions, but that's all right. I, I want this for you guys to get now. You know where to find it. So not only did he become flesh, he became human, became flesh, became human to become the servant of the Father. He became his Father's servant on earth. When he became flesh, he entered the world to become human, become flesh from the virgin, his mother, his blessed mother by the spirit to become truly human so that in that capacity on earth, he would now become the servant of his father. He came to serve his father to be a servant. Okay, here it is. John 1, 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. So the word became flesh. He became human from the virgin by the spirit. All right. Now that he's on earth as a man, now that he's on earth as a man, he becomes a father servant. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence. Oh, I'm using King James. Let me use a translation. It'll be a little easier. What Bible do they go by, by the way? They go by King James. Oh, they do? Okay, let's stay with the King James then. All right, we stay with King James. Really? That's their Bible? They don't use yes. anything else? No, nope, just King James. For the most part, yeah, yeah. they won't. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Appreciate you, sir. All right. But when Jesus knew it, he withdrew himself from thence. And great multitudes followed him. And healed them all and charged them that they should not make him known that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by Esaias the prophet saying behold my servant so Jesus became what oh, can you hear me now yeah Jesus there. became what servant 
Okay. When did he become a servant? When he came on earth as a man, right? Yes. Okay, because he became flesh. Behold my servant whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I'll put my spirit upon him, and he shall show judgment to the Gentiles. So he became the father's servant when he became flesh. Now, notice what happens when he becomes flesh. When he's I'm made flesh, he becomes flesh. Watch what happens. Jeremiah 32, 26, 27. Then came the word of the Lord, Yahuwah, unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Too much rattling. I lost audio, that. if you can hear me. Yeah. Too much rattling with the mic, brother. Can you hear me? You're muted. I can't hear you. Can't hear you. You there, brother? Your connection sucks. Still there. I don't know what to do. Kevin, either. can you still be called the prostitute, Kevin? And your mother is she a whore? Now, can you hear me? Can you hear me? You're muted, buddy. Alex, I'm going to have to send it if your sound doesn't get better. Can you hear me? Speak. Speak. All right. I'm going to try to get him on again. Kevin, can you still be a whore? And your mother, is she a whore? Stupid. Fix your mic, Alex. And I'm going to get, let you come back on. If not, then I'm going to have to shut it down delete this. I don't know why he's talking to me and driving. Alex, are you driving, dude? I'm back. No, no, no. We're here. I had a phone call come in and completely messed everything up. I couldn't hear you anymore. Stuck for the law, dude. Why are you on the phone, dude? Why aren't you on a computer, man? I don't have one. <laughs> can I buy you one then? All right. Anyway, I don't know where we got cut off. Uh, uh, oh, uh, Jesus Christ becoming the servant of God. Yeah. Right. Right. Why did he become a servant? Because he became what? A human. human. Became flesh, right? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, sir. Keep calling me, sir, Mister. You better make sure your connection's good, brother, because I'm going to find you and hunt you down. No, we're good. We're here. We're here. <laughs> here, Jeremiah 32, 26, 27. Now let's see if you've been paying attention. Jesus okay. becomes flesh, and when he becomes flesh, he becomes human. He becomes the Father's servant. So he serves the Father. He became flesh. Let's see if you're going to follow this. All right. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. All right. Okay. Jeremiah 32, 26, 27. Then came the Word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. So the God of all flesh, is there anything too hard for me? So if the word becomes flesh, not the father, and the word becomes flesh to serve the father, what would the father become to Jesus after he becomes flesh? God. God. God yeah, that makes flesh. sense. Yeah. So why, what, where's, where's the problem? Yeah. Where's the problem? I, I don't see one. <laughs> we don't see one now. Yeah, now. <laughs> That's the point. If we let the Bible speak, there is no problem. Jesus is not just God in nature. He's human in nature. He remains human in nature, so he remains in the flesh, so the Father remains as God. But they cannot show you anywhere that before Jesus became flesh, the Father was as God. It's only after he becomes flesh. So that objection goes out the window. Yeah, That's done with. So any others? Give them, give them to me so I can deal with them. Um, what else? What else do we? Oh, okay, yeah. so I, I did. You I gotta have, have these one. questions, dude. You know you're gonna lie. What yeah. do you mean? What else? I got one. one. I got one. Well, you kind of yeah. answered both of them. Wow. Uh, so, for, so in King James, First uh, John five seven, uh, I brought that up to them before, and they said, "Well, that was added to scripture." So then, what Bible do they follow? The King James. The King James. But you just showed them some King James said it was added. Yeah. I don't. I, that's what I'm saying. I don't know how to. And no, I, I say, hold on. Say, I don't get it. Do you follow the King James? Yeah. Do you believe the Bible is God's word? Yes. So this verse is in it. Do you accept it or not? No. So that means you don't follow the King James. So what version do you want me to use? Correct. That, okay. That, but, that. 
But now let's go with it. So 1 John 5, 7, they say it's added. So are they admitting that if it wasn't added, it proved the Trinity? You could say yes. What? Yeah, I would say. Yeah. So in other words, when you brought up 1 John 5, 7, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. So they're saying, yeah, it's added, meaning it's not authentic. Someone else added it to the manuscripts. So John didn't write this. So are they acknowledging that this does teach the Trinity, but it's added, John didn't write it, so the Bible doesn't teach it. Is that what they're implying? Yes. Yes. You know what you you know what they did right now, right? They just proved to you Jesus claimed to be God. You know why? <laughs> Ow. Yeah, let me show you why. They okay. just proved it. Because this is what I would say. Say, okay, hold on. So I would say, so let me get and get get what you're telling me. You're admitting this passage shows Father, Word, and Holy Ghost. They're one in essence. They're one God. You're admitting this is what it teaches. But because our earlier copies of First John do not have it, the earliest Greek copies do not have it. We only find in some late Greek manuscripts in the medieval period and sometimes in a marginal note. Therefore, it's not authentic. Because John didn't write it. But you are acknowledging if it was authentic, it would teach the Trinity, right? Yes. yes. Yeah, well, I'll say thank you. You just proved Jesus claimed to be God. Why? <laughs> Here's why. Because now watch the dishonesty. Because no matter what you show them, they're going to find a way around it. They'll say, oh, but hold on. John 1030, I and my father in one. Now, this is authentic. So now do you admit Jesus is God? John 10, <laughs> So they, with that verse, they try to say that they're, they're one in mind. Like that's what my point. You just proved my point. They're lying to you because no yeah. matter what you show them, because now notice here they say it's one in mind. So then, even if First John five seven was authentic, they'll say, oh, but they're one in purpose. Yeah, one in purpose. Yeah. yeah. You see, so they're lying. Damn if you do, damn if you don't. Now I'm going to refute this lie. No, never been to Bible college, dude. Never been to <laughs> university. Never been to seminary. Okay, now. Say, no, au contraire, they're not one in mind. How do I know? Because now let's read the context. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> Just John 10, 27, 33. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So, Jesus speaking. They're his sheep, they hear his voice. And he gives them eternal life, never-ending, incorruptible life. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. So remember this, this is Jesus speaking, because then he says, my father. And the next, next line, I watch. Because the Jews knew their Old Testament. So they knew this is who Jesus claimed to be. What was that? Oh, no, you're fine. Okay, I don't know, because yeah, your mic is killing me. You're killing me, and your mic's killing me in the background. But sorry, man. We believe in the resurrection, so keep killing me. I don't care what your wife said about you. Are you ready? <laughs> yes, sir, I'm ready. You're laughing at me or with me, sir? With you. But I got to laugh first. See, I caught you again. All right. <laughs> okay, watch here. Watch here. Watch what he says, and now watch. My sheep hear my voice. So there are his sheep, his voice. And there are sheep in his hand. Because it says, no one can pluck them out of my hand, right? Correct. And he gives them eternal life, never-ending life. That in itself shows he must be God. What creature can give other creatures never-ending immortal existence? But let's put that aside. Now watch the language of Jesus. Tell me if this sounds familiar. Old Testament, Psalm 95, verses 6 to 7. Psalm 95, verses 6 to 7. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for He is our God. Now watch. We are the people of His pasture, the sheep of His hand. Today, if you will hear His voice. Now notice, it says believers are the sheep of Jehovah's hand. Hand here, metaphor for power. Because when we think hand, we think strength and power, resistance, striking. The sheep under his care, in his hand of protection and his power, they are to hear his voice. Okay, But Jesus said, they're my sheep and they are to hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice and they're in his hand. See it? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Who does Jesus think he is? But now notice what else he says. I give them eternal life, never-ending life. No creature can do this. What creature can say, I can give to all believers never-ending immortal existence? But we'll get there. So he gives eternal life. No one can deliver out of his hand, pluck out of his hand. Now watch. Deuteronomy 32, 39. God speaking to show that there is no other God that can do what he does. 
I'm the only God who can do this. Do what? See now that I, even I am he. There is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. No other God has this power. Death and life are in my hands. Mm -hmm. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Wow. Sound familiar? Yeah. yeah. That's is that really what good. Jesus does? That's really good. But here, Isaiah 43, 13. <clears throat> Yea, before the day, before creation came into being, before the day was, I am he. And there is none who can deliver out of my hand. I will work who shall let it. So no one can deliver out of God's hand, whether to bless or to judge. And he's the one who makes alive. And no other God can do this. Well, wait, let's go back to Jesus. What did Jesus say? My sheep hear my voice. I give them eternal life. And no one can deliver any of them out of my hand. He just claimed. What the Old Testament said about Jehovah, about Yahweh, about the true God. Yeah. Now watch here. But he's not the father. My father, which gave them me, is greater than all. Greater than anyone who would try to stop the sheep from being saved. No man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. This is where he says we're one. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. No man can pluck them out of my father's hand. Why? I and my father in one. Where in the world did they get one in purpose or one in mind? Oh, yeah. He does claim they're one in power and ability. No one can pluck them out of my father's hand because no one can oppose God. No one is as powerful as God, let alone stronger than God. And neither can anyone pluck them out of my hand because I and my father are one in our power. That's why the Jews wanted to kill him. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? Now notice, they know their Bible. Look what they say. So they know he's not the father because he just said, God is my father. And they know he's a man. But look, the Jews answered him saying, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. Why? Because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. So we see you're a man. You just claim to be God, even though you're not the father. But we know you can't be God, and therefore you're blaspheming. So they're right. He's a man. They're right. He made himself out to be God, but they're wrong for thinking he's blaspheming. Because he is God. So you see the dishonesty? Yeah. You see the dishonesty? So you give them 1 John 5, 7. Yeah, that would prove the Trinity when it says the Father, Word, the Holy Ghost, these three are one. But then when you go to John 10, 30, no, it doesn't prove that Jesus is God because, see, no matter what, they're going to explain it away. Yeah. Yeah. Anything yeah. That, that, that's why, you know, I wanted to reach out because that's that's kind of where we're at. You know, no matter what we give them, it's always either explained away but or they this, say, well, what about this verse or what about that? That's verse? good. So give me that verse. So, if it, so but you admit you can't deal with this verse. Now, all you got to do is you got to keep answering, but you got to answer where you don't leave them. You don't leave them with the ability to have doubts like you demolish like oh well one in purpose no here's the context yeah. oh you got to leave them where they have no way of refuting your argument they may not accept but now you've left them wow he showed me the context and i can't get around that that's what you need to do okay right yeah Adek, i told you last time if you're a muslim i'll bring you up but you didn't answer anyway <laughs> any I other think my wife has another question for you yeah no? keep asking it's your time that's it um well we did have a question on what soul and spirit yeah yeah no one knows if they're distinct whoever tells you they're going beyond scripture okay. scripture right. differentiates soul and spirit but sometimes they're identified as being the same they're oh, using okay. okay um okay and then what about um so in, in in the cult um once you do the first class and you you know you theoretically pass or you're you're considered born again they make you speak in tongues in front of the whole class and they yeah. have you go through the That's abcs faking it they're faking it. You can't make anyone speak in tongues. It has to be a gift of the Holy Spirit. That's what we were okay. requiring of because it's all, I, yeah. I don't know anything else but that. So yeah, I, no, they, they, they're lying to you. There's nothing in scripture that says you must necessarily speak in tongues when you're born again, born of the Spirit. They're lying to you. That's not their number one. Number two, if you read 1 Corinthians chapters 12 and 13 and 14, read those three chapters. Paul himself says not everyone is given tongues. Here, let me show it to you. 
Just read 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14. Three chapters. For the sake of time, I'm going to tell you what Paul says here. 1 Corinthians 12, 28 to 31. Here it is. And God has set some in the church, first apostles. So the first position is apostles, right? Oh, yeah. Secondarily, prophets. Prophets were there with the apostles, working with the apostles to bring about the revelation of Christ to the church. But the apostles were greater than these prophets. Thirdly comes teachers. Then those who do miracles. Then the gift of healings. And those who would help, like help financially. Those who administer, like administration of the church. Diversities of tongues. Here it is, right? See it? You see it says diversity of tongues? Yep. Now watch. Here's the question. Are all apostles? Was everyone an apostle? No. Okay. Are all prophets? Was everyone a prophet? Mm -mm. Are all teachers? Nope. Did all work miracles? Mm -mm. Are all workers of miracles? No, right? A little off so I can hear you. Oh, no. Sorry. Do all have the gifts of healing? No. Do all speak with tongues? <laughs> no. no. Do all interpret? It's right there. Okay. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's good. Okay. But, but then he tells you what gifts God wants us all to have. There are three gifts that God wants everyone to have, but he doesn't want everyone to have tongues. Here, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and I, I show you, an, I show unto you a more excellent way. Now, in the King James, the word charity translates the word agape, which means love. So be careful, because this is written in 17th century Elizabethan English. That time, charity also meant love. Okay. But the Greek is clear. It's agape, it's love. So what are the greatest gifts that God wants us to have? Everyone has to have them. God wants everyone to have these gifts. Not like tongues, only some has that. Here, let me show you. 1 Corinthians 13, 13, right? And now abide of faith, hope, and charity. These are the three. God wants everyone to have faith, to be faithful. Everyone have hope and love, these three. But the greatest of these is charity, is love. And that's why he says, cultivate love. That's what you want. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and I have no charity, meaning love, because the Greek word agape means love. That's what it meant at that time. Charity meant love then. Not today. Don't define it by today. See what it meant then. And the Greek is clear. It's love. That's why if I open up another translation, you'll see it's love. So what did Paul say the greatest gifts were? That everyone must have because God wants everyone to have them. Everyone must have faith, hope, and love because God wants everyone to have it. If I speak with the tongues of men of angels but do not have love, I become a noisy gong or canging symbol. And if I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith, as, so that's the remove mountain. So fit, f love is even greater than faith. But do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have love, it profits me nothing. Love is patient. Boy, that means I need a lot more love because I'm so angry. <laughs> love is kind. Oops, sucks being me. Is not jealous. Does not brag, is not puffed up, it's not arrogant, conceited. It does not act unbecomingly, it doesn't act stupidly or foolishly or carnally, it does not seek its own. You don't seek your own interest. Love does not seek its own interest. You're always seeking the benefit of others. Your wife, children, the church, glory of Christ is not provoked. When you love someone, you try to be patient and not lash out. Does not take into account a wrong suffered. When someone makes a mistake and they know a mistake, you don't keep beating them over their head and file it away in your brain. Right, wife? I'll forget, but I'll, I'll, I'll forgive you, but I won't forget. And then years later, you throw it in his face. <laughs> right, wifey? Yeah. yeah. No. no. <laughs> you remember 20 years ago on that day when you took me to dinner and you said that? Well, that was 20 years ago. I forgot. <laughs> See, love doesn't hold any records. Right? Yes does not take into account a wrong suffered. In other words, it doesn't have a record of injustices committed against you, right? Yes. So now, here it is. It does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endure all things. You give everyone a benefit of doubt without being gullible and stupid and being taken advantage of. Yeah. But anyway, so you're told right here again, not everyone is going to be given the gift of tongues. Is that in their yeah. Bible? got to be. Do all yeah. speak in tongues? No. Absolutely not. Wow. 
Yeah, that's awesome. That's a really good one. Yeah. Um, I have one last question. Okay. You can have more. Oh. It's your time. Ask me. <laughs> um, this the one I have. I can't remember exactly what it says, but it talks about um Jesus. Um, if they don't say that he's come in the flesh, I'm John chapter four verses one to six. Okay, hold on. What does that necessarily mean? Well, that actually destroys them. Come in the flesh. That means he came from some place to become flesh. That means he existed before he became flesh. Okay, that's what I thought, but I didn't want to miss. Oh, you're right. He comes in the flesh. Comes in the flesh. Now, the historical context of this passage, I got to show it to you. First John 4, 1 to 6. Oh, sorry. First John 4. All right, it's there were a group of Greek Greeks who are converting to Christianity. I got to give you the context. There are a group of Greeks who are converting to Christianity. They were bringing in their Greek philosophy and their Greek paganism, mixing in with Christianity. These groups are called today Gnostics, G N O S T I C S, Gnostics. They believe the universe was evil, matter was evil, and that the height of salvation was being free from your physical body that your spirit would leave your body and you'd continue to exist as a disembodied spirit because matter is evil and you want to get rid of it and they took that philosophy and try to make it christian so they taught that the divine christ because he is divine and he is spirit and he's absolutely pure would never defile himself by becoming flesh so the real christ taught Evil, matter is evil, your body is evil, and here I'm going to give you secret knowledge to escape your physical body so you can live as souls forever and ever. So John was dealing with them. Are you with me there? Yep. So there, there are two types of Gnostics. There's one called the Docetists. You got to know this, it's recorded. They believe, dokeo, from the verb dokeo, meaning that Jesus, the Christ, never became human, but he appeared with a phantom body. So you saw this man, Jesus. You saw what looked like a physical body, but wasn't real. It was a phantom body. He just appeared in a human form, but he wasn't really flesh. That's why in some of these stories, when Christ is walking, let's say, in the sand, he doesn't leave footprints because he doesn't have a real body. Uh... Now, the other group of Gnostics, and this has started spreading at the time of John, and it started flourishing in the second, third centuries. The other group of Gnostics said, well, there was a divine Christ and the man Jesus. The divine Christ entered the man Jesus and empowered him, but then abandoned him when he went to be killed. That's when he left him. So the man Jesus died, but the divine Christ left him. Okay. So this is who John is attacking because they don't believe Christ came in the flesh, right? Correct. Why? Because Christ was what to them? He was God. He was an aeon. He wasn't the, the only God. They also believed the pleroma. And from this pleroma came gradations of divine beings called aeons. Aeon, right? And the closer you were to the pleroma, the more divine you were. Anyway, to them, Christ was truly divine. That means he already existed as God, right? Okay. You, you understand what they believe? Yes, sir. But they didn't believe he became flesh because he's God. He's from the pleroma. And he would never become flesh and defile himself. Right? Yep. But that's what John is saying, our Antichrist. Beloved, 1 John 4, 1 to 6. Believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. This is how you know, have the, you, know you have the true Spirit of God and not a lying spirit deceiving you. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. For the way, way international, this makes no sense because Christ never came into the flesh because all he is is man. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But this says, no, he comes into the flesh, meaning he's coming from a prior state of existence where he was in flesh to become flesh. Yeah. You with me? Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So this shows that they are liars, because why? It's saying Christ comes into the flesh, like John 1.14 says, the word became flesh. Yes. But you don't believe Christ became flesh because his existence began in the womb. 
Yeah. It's like me saying Alex came into the flesh. Well, hello, Alex, when he was conceived, he was conceived in his mother's womb, and he was conceived from that moment as a human. So what do you mean he came in the flesh? Prior to that, he didn't exist. Right? Yeah. Does it make sense for me to say Alex came into the flesh? No. No. Unless he pre-existed. Exactly. So this only makes sense if Jesus was there before he became flesh. The word, the son, who then becomes flesh, was sent forth to become flesh. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ has come to flesh is not of God. That's way, way international. They don't believe he came into the flesh. So what are they? Antichrist. This is that spirit of Antichrist. Whereof ye have heard that it should come. And even now already is it in the world. So the spirit of Antichrist was already corrupting people and corrupting the faith. So way international, nothing new. It's not. It's just another mutation of the Antichrist system. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So that actually destroys this this cult. Any other yeah. questions on the Trinity or anything else? Go ahead, guys. No. Not that I can think I of. Think that, yeah, that was it for us. All right. Well, if you have more, you can come back and let me know. Okay. Us, right? Okay. Yeah, Thank definitely. You. What do you think? We'll you rewatch this until you learn it so you can share it with them. If they have more objections to write them down, but come to me. Yeah. Awesome. Thank definitely. you. All right, buddy. God bless you. Take care, guys. God bless you. Thank you. All right. I still got one to do tonight on refuting Greg Stafford. So I see this is why the Lord had me suspend, suspend those sessions. This is my new computer, by the way. So let me just show you. Right. You go here. We'll be on tonight. Late nighter. In Jesus' name, I pray it doesn't get distracted again. So you go here. Because I'm not done. By the time I'm done with Stafford, he won't have any way to recover. Yeah, he's going to try to respond. But his arguments, even his followers will see, man, these are bad arguments. May the Lord Jesus save Stafford from the dragon who has deceived him. And Greg, we love you. We're praying for you, man. Come to the truth. Come home. So here you go. Tonight, God willing. Tonight, we're going live. We're going live. 1 a.m. New York time, Eastern Standard Time, Michigan time. Lord willing, see you then. If the Lord wills, pray for my health. Pray for my daughter's health, that God gives us perfect safety, security, protection, health. Pray the Lord will bless me to stay in love with Jesus. My daughter's fall in love with Jesus, that he brings them to me, provide financially, finish the race with only its integrity. Never shame the Lord, but finish the race and glorify the Lord. And the Lord bless this young lady and her family, and his will be done in our lives. Lord willing, see you soon. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. We love you. Glory to the Father and the Spirit. Bless, bless you all. Lord bless. Christ is risen, risen indeed.